Well, it's great that we're all together on this very hot and sticky summer's day. Um, I'm sorry that we're not able to gather in person, and but uh, we look forward to being able to do so on August 16th. We're going to give it another try. Uh, it's great to have you all here. I want you to know it's not too late for you to um, request a psalm that you would like me to incorporate into the service and preach on. Um, we have the whole month of August, and uh, there's five Sundays in August, so we have five more opportunities. So um, let me know if there's a particular psalm that um, speaks to you or that's troubled you um, or that you've always loved, and um, I'll be happy to focus on that one. Uh, this afternoon, again, as there is every Sunday, there is the silent vigil against racism in front of St. James. Uh, and I am away next Sunday. We've been talking a little bit about this with some of you who were here early. Uh, so I'm away. Uh, I'm technically going to, I will say I'm on vacation starting tomorrow, but I'm working summer lunch on Tuesday. I'm away, away, physically away, uh, starting Wednesday and through next Monday. Uh, Roger and I and Celine are going to the Cape. Um, and what I'm going to be doing this afternoon is compiling a list of dis all different kinds of churches and their websites and or connection information so that you could next Sunday uh, pick another congregation to visit. And you don't, you're not restricted to the list I'm giving you. I'm just giving you suggestions. If you have a friend or a family member or someone you know that's talked about this great church or online service, I'd encourage you to spend some time next week. And some of the services, too, um, they... Like I was saying before, the Dorset Church, for example, they put theirs up like usually Friday night or Saturday morning, and so you can watch it anytime. It's not live, um, but it's a full service. So uh, I'd encourage you to do that. And then I also want to invite you to come back and tell us, tell me um, ideas you got from it. Like you may see that they do this cool thing when they're doing it, and we can. I can't promise you, and we certainly don't have. Scott and I will attest to the fact that we are not professional videographers, but um, we, there certainly could be elements that might transfer um, in some way, shape, or form to this service because um, we probably will be doing this for a while longer. So let's take a deep breath now on this sticky Sunday and uh, recognize the power of the Holy Spirit that is certainly with us through this service and through this time together. And I'm going to uh, unmute Mary, and she is going to play our uh, opening hymn. You hopefully have the words to. I'll ask Mary to unmute herself. I keep forgetting the new Zoom rules is you have to unmute yourself. You got it. So um, now we will... Uh, join in together and singing from our respective homes. Sorry, bell. <laughs> This Sunday is the Sunday that we're focusing on uh, Psalm 121, 
And so I'd invite you to be in prayer with me. Our ever-present strength and help, we come this morning in response to a call we have felt in the marrow of our bones. We may not be sure, we may even be full of doubts and not un fully understand how we came to worship together, all of us at home, but together. And yet, we're here. Help us, O oh God, listen with new ears and open hearts. Touch us during this time of worship that we may know your unconditional love, not just for the world as a whole, but for us individually. It is for this that we long and for which we search. Amen. I invite us now to together uh, join in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It's now our time for joys and concerns. And the ones that I'm aware of are, um, we pray each week for another church. And this week it's our friends at the Congregational Church of South Wallingford and their pastor, Bob Ebling. We lift prayers of thanksgiving and blessing on um, a brand new baby, baby Harlow, who was uh, born to Alex and Avery, um, and whose grandparents are uh, Jamie and Susan Postian. Uh, so we lift up um, baby Harlow in our blessing. Concerns I'm aware of, um, deaths that uh, and families who have lost loved ones that I would lift up are uh, prayers for the, all those who knew and loved Gail Rice's friend Cheryl, who died this week after a long struggle with cancer. Um, I'd also lift up, some of you may remember um, Penny Hansen. She was a part of this congregation. She died um, earlier this month. She, uh, she was actually the church secretary for a while in the late 80s-ish, that era. Um, and uh, she lived in Arlington for a number of years, but has been retired to Florida for at least since the mid 90s um, but she will I will be doing her service in a couple of weeks um, at Ira Allen and so I've been in touch with her family so and her family has fond memories they grew up here they grew up in Sunderland the children did so um, we'd hold them in our prayers um, I'd also lift up our whole Northshire community which right now is dealing with some fear some worry um, about the whole COVID testing, who has it, who doesn't have it, and it's affected businesses and um, the, lives, the lives of lots of people. So I would hold all of them and all of us in uh, prayers also. If you have a joy or concern you'd like me to lift up, please unmute yourself and raise your, and say your name. You've got one? Phyllis. <clears throat> Phyllis, Phyllis, go ahead. Um, prayers for my brother. He underwent uh, surgery on Friday. If you recall, he took a fall two months ago and they discovered he has a brain bleed. And uh, that was semi uh, successful and he's undergoing surgery again on Monday for the same. Thank you, Phil. But I had that down and I skipped over and I didn't go back and because uh, I also want to lift up Kathy, Mad Kathy Hay Mad Madaloni Hayden. Um, she, her granddaughter is going through a tough time right now and she asked for prayers for her also. Um, other joys or concerns? Karen, go ahead. Um, can you hear me now? Yes. I, okay. Um, continued prayers for Jane who is struggling with, with deep depression and many physical problems. Thank you, Karen. Others who might have a joy or concern to lift up. Then I'd invite you to be in a spirit of prayer with me. 
Lord God, maker of heaven and earth, you made magnificent mountains and the oceans, the tiny worms and bugs and everything in between. And you made us. You are amazing and powerful, yet you love each of us dearly. Thank you for guiding our lives and ruling all creation with love. In the knowledge of your love and your power, we thank you also today for the blessing of the Congregational Church of South Wallingford and their Pastor Bob, for the birth of baby Harlow and the joy she's brought, brought to her parents and grandparents. Lord of hosts, guide the leaders of our world and give your wisdom to all who are making decisions. Send your peace on earth. In you alone, the maker of heaven and earth, we find our help. God of compassion, bless us and those we love with safety, health, and endurance. In you alone, the maker of heaven and earth, we find our help. May your abiding presence be felt in the lives of those we know who are sick or grieving, lost or hurting. Today, we especially lift up Kathy's granddaughter and Phyllis's brother, Stuart, as well as Jane in healing prayer. We also lift up the families who have lost loved ones, including Cheryl and Penny. And we lift up to you, O oh God, our shared lives, especially in this part of um, your creation, this corner of Vermont, where fear and worry consume many. We ask that you would be a source of comfort and hope. O oh God, our help comes from you, the maker of heaven and earth. For you watch over us day and night and you have provided for all we need. We pray this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I now invite Patty to unmute herself as she offers us our um, special musical offering this morning. His eye is on the sparrow. After practicing this song, a few times, I really was able to hear and feel the meaning of the words. I hope you are able to find comfort in the words as I sing today. <clears throat> Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely? and long for heaven and home. When Jesus is my portion, my constant friend is he. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. For his eye is on the sparrow. And I know he watches me. Let not your heart be troubled. His tender word I hear, and resting on his goodness, I lose my doubts and fears. Oh, by the path he leadeth, but one step I may see. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. For his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me.
touches me. Whenever I am tempted, whenever clouds arise, when song gives place to sighing, when hope within me dies, I draw the closer to him. From care he sets me free. His eyes on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. His eyes on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. For his eyes on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. I had forgotten to make my weekly, um, thank you, Patty, my weekly. Uh, ask and i'm asking not specifically for money i'm asking you to think about um the gifts you've received and to think about your life and um what this church and what your faith means to you and consider making a gift out of your abundance and so i'd ask you to consider that i'd now invite phyllis to unmute herself and offer our scripture reading, Psalm 121. This is Psalm 121 from the New International Version. I lift my eyes up to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. Thank you, Phyllis. The struggle has never been more real. We love the fact that on any given day, we can step outside and not have to go very far to look up to see a hill or a mountain. They are so much a part of the scenery that we might, on some of our more preoccupied days, take peaks with names like Equinox, Grass, Lybrook, West, or Red for granted. Having spent one very flat year in Bowling Green, Ohio, where literally the only hill in the whole city was on the man-made golf course, and you had to go, and you could go up just to the sixth floor of any building, and looking above all the trees, and you could see clearly the city of Toledo, a straight shot, 23 miles away. So I really try hard to look up with gladness every chance I get. This mountainous beauty is a huge draw for our city and suburb dwelling siblings from more crowded parts of the Northeast who want to lift up their eyes to our hills and mountains. Mostly we appreciate all they do to bolster our economy, which allows us to continue to have the quality of life here that we treasure. However, over these past four months, with the coronavirus weighing heavy on our minds, and especially this past week, when the risk feels too close for comfort, there have been a lot of us who are having second thought about all those mountain yearning people who could be carrying the virus with them in their travels to the Vermont we get to call home. It, it is possible that this 121st Psalm was used as a liturgy for travelers, think some scholars. So they think that the first two verses would have been recited by the ones who were going on to be on the road 
while the remaining six verses would have been words of blessing spoken by the ones they were leaving, the ones who were staying behind, as a kind of form of encouragement and strength for those making the journey. These travelers may well have been heading to Jerusalem and the temple on a pilgrimage. Would it help to think of our guests in the area as also on a pilgrimage of sorts? Whether the hills or mountains were a help or a hindrance as the first two verses end in a question, the answer to that question is all about the one who does the keeping or guarding or preserving or watching over, depending on which version of the Bible you're reading. The answer to the question of where help is coming from couldn't be clearer. It is the ever-present God, and that keeping is portable. God is on the move with us, traveling with us wherever we go, never letting us out of sight. God is overhead and underfoot, journeying through the good times and the struggles, and even facing off with evil on our behalf. This God, our God, is majestic and all-encompassing in spite of so many times that we try to pigeonhole God and create God in the image that suits us. What image of God, big or small, are you holding close to your heart and taking with you as you journey through these hard days of distance and isolation and upheaval throughout the world? Father Greg Boyle, in his book, Tattoos on the Heart, in which he shares the work and wonder of his decades directing Homeboy Industries in Los Angeles to change the path of gang members, confronts the concern that sometimes our image of God can get very small if we let it. He describes how his friend and fellow priest named Bill helped give him, Greg, an image of God that be, has become his own touchstone. What happened was that several years ago, Bill took time off from his ministry to take care of his dying father. And Greg Boyle described the experience this way. Bill's father had become a frail man, dependent on Bill to do everything for him. And though he was physically not what he had been, and the disease was wasting him away, his mind remained alert and lively. In the role reversal common to adult children who care for their dying parents, Bill would put his father to bed and then read him to sleep, exactly as his father had done for him in childhood. Bill would read from some novel, and his father would lie there, staring at his son, smiling. Bill was exhausted from the day's care and work and would plead with his dad, Look, here's the idea. I read to you, you fall asleep. Bill's father would impishly apologize and dutifully close his eyes. But this wouldn't last long. Soon enough, Bill's father would pop one eye open and smile at his son. Bill would catch him in wine. Now, come on. The father would again oblige until he couldn't anymore. And the other eye would open to catch a glimpse of his son. This went on and on, and after his father's death, Bill said that this evening ritual was really a story of a father who just couldn't take his eye off his kid. This is the God that the psalmist here is describing, the one that so loves us that God can't keep from watching us, even through the hardest of times. We are being kept by God this very moment and every other moment from here to eternity. Let us now lift up this beloved psalm in the form of a prayer from Nan Merrill. My heart's eyes behold your divine glory. From whence does my help come? My help comes from you who created heaven and earth. You strengthen and uphold me, you who are ever by my side. 
Behold, you who watch over the nations will see all hearts awaken to the light. For you are the great counselor. You dwell within all hearts that we might respond to the universal heart. Like the sun that nourishes us by day, like the stars that guide the wayfarer at night. In you, we shall not be afraid of the darkness, for you are the light of our life. May you keep us in our going out and our coming in from this day, from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. I invite Mary now to unmute herself and uh, she will play our closing hymn and we can sing along to Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. As we go out into the warmth of this day, I invite you to take this blessing. The way is long, let us go together. The way is difficult, let us help each other. The way is joyful, let us share it. The way is Christ, for Christ is the way, let us follow. The way is open before us, let us go. With the love of God, the grace of Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Have a wonderful two weeks, and I'll see you on uh, August 2nd when we will celebrate uh, the Sacrament of Holy Communion together and we wear our hats. Um, <laughs> have a great week, and you can unmute yourself now if you want to say anything. Have a I forgot week. to mention that we should have said a prayer for our nation with the loss of John Lewis. Yes, for sure. Yes. Amen. Good point. Jack? Give our love to Betty. Yeah. Yes. King's best friend. Wow. He was out. Have a great. wonderful vacation, Kathy. Yeah. Thank you very much. Have a good time. Thank you. Enjoy your, enjoy yeah. your time Be away. safe. Yeah, have Thank a safe you. trip, Kathy. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Wash your hands. Hi, Betty. Wear a mask, wash your hands. Social yes. distance. Have a good week. <laughs> Bring us back some beach sand. I will. Uh, no taffy. No, no taffy. No taffy. Please. No, no. taffy. Great week. Stay safe, everybody. Thank you, everyone. So, have a nice have week. Everybody. Have a great week, everybody. Bye. Bye. Take care, everybody. Where's the sunlight? Been looking for. Uh, no. I found it. We can't, we can't go oh. there in a day, huh? Four hours to go. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.